The month of August 1972 will forever be an unforgettable month in the history book of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. It would have been a disastrous month if the astronauts' mission was changed. This event occurred in the month of August 1972. The Sun has different regions and astronauts have labelled these regions for easy identification. A region labelled McMath 11976 happens to be one of the Sun's most active regions, and has been observed releasing powerful flares. Luckily the researchers were quick to discover these powerful flames, and according to the researchers that was an unusual occurrence, and such an incident was not expected to occur at the McMath region. The region released one of the most strongest flares observed by humans, and those flares were tagged as the X-Class flares. All these were reported to have happened on the 2nd of August in the year of 1972. The following day, which was the 3rd of August, the X-Class flares made the speed of the solar winds increase between 270 miles per hour to 363 miles per hour. Another effect of the solar winds was the production of a shockwave. By the third day, right up to the sixth day, the sun had released a gamma ray line the first of its kind in the history of the Sun. This emission made protons travel to very high energy within the region of McMath 11076. The most surprising part of this was the fact that environmental forecasters from the Space Environment Services Center had warned against this disaster. With the aid of their advanced technology, the forecasters had issued a warning on the day the X-Class flares were released saying that the sun might release powerful flares that may affect the Earth. The whole world believed their words on the 3rd of August when auroras were seen in America. This effect attracted the attention of big media firms who broadcasted the news. Some of the events that happened due to the solar flares were a surge in voltage, which a cable network AT&T reported in Chicago. There was a shutdown in telephone services in Iowa, Apart from America, the Canadian government also reported that solar flares had damaged a lot of their system components and telecommunication. All of these wouldn't have mattered if astronauts were in space during the solar flares. The National Aeronautics and Space Administration released a statement that the storm happened without any casualties. It was reported that the Apollo 16, which was part of the two Apollo missions, had less space for Earth, and luckily this was three months before the storm. The second Apollo, Apollo 17, was scheduled to travel in December, so the storm had occurred at just the right time. NASA further explained that if any of the Apollo crew were in space when the storm happened, the radiation that person would be exposed to would have been ten times the amount of radiation a human was meant to experience in their lifetime. This has made NASA start devising means of building a modern spaceship, in which if such flares were to happen again and an astronaut is caught in between, there would be little or no effect on the astronauts. One interesting story that's been reported is that the moon rang like a bell during Apollo 12. Over the years, there have been reports that the moon does have its very own sound, with few astronauts coming forward and describing what they heard while close to the lunar surface. A particular set of astronauts were on a mission in space between the year of 1972 and 1977. Between these years, astronomers installed ground motion instruments, known as seismometers on the moon so they could have recordings of the moon's activities. This included things like shakes, and these occur when energy is released on the surface of the moon. The seismometer recorded the moonquakes, and the report came out that the moon makes a sound that can be likened to a bell. This report by the astronomers backs up the report by the crew of Apollo 12, Apollo 12 was to be on the moon between the later months of the year 1969 and the early months of the year 1970. History has it that Apollo 12 crashed a spacecraft onto the moon's surface. When energy is released, it causes the moon to shake. The Apollo 12 team reported that the crash led to the ringing on the moon, and that this happened for around an hour. This ringing was first reported by Apollo 12 and they said it sounded like a bell. 
the sound of the moon soon brought forth many questions. One of those is, is the moon hollow? When Apollo 12 first heard the sound of the moon, they claimed it may have been because of this reason. Ever since the moonquakes in the year of 1972, it's been estimated that 28 moonquakes occurred before the end of the year in 1977. This was reported by the astronomers after they collected the data. All the shakes on the moon came with a sound and the sound was not different from each other. It's one of the reasons why the hollow moon theory started to take off. The presence of moonquakes was a sudden finding from seismometers put on the moon by Apollo astronauts from 1969 to 1972. In the course of the Apollo 11, 12, 13, 14 and 16 missions to the moon, astronauts set the seismometer instruments on the surface of the moon. Aside from the Apollo 11 seismometer that functioned for only three weeks, the remaining four seismometers were able to document almost 30 shallow moonquakes between 1969 and 1977. The quakes on the moon fluctuate between 2 and 5, meaning that it's between very minor to moderate. These instruments worked perfectly until they were turned off in 1977. Four categories of moonquakes were recorded by the instruments and they are as follows. Deep moonquakes which are as a result of Earth's gravitational tug on the moon's interior, around 434 to 700 kilometers from the surface, which is similar to how the water in the Earth brings about tides due to the moon's gravitational pull. Meteoroid impact on the moon. Thermal moonquakes caused by the expansion of the moon's fragile crust after it experiences sunlight after two weeks of the lunar night. Shallow moonquakes occur between 50 to 220 kilometers or 31 to 155 miles beneath the moon's surface. A recent discovery shows that the major reason for the moonquakes is because the moon is shrinking. Just as a grape shrinks to raisin, the moon's surface also crumbles but the result on the surface differs. Unlike the grape, the fragile moon's surface crust breaks, causing one segment of crust to be pushed up over a neighboring part. The cause of the shrink is linked to the cooling of the interior, which has caused the moon to have diminished by 50 meters for hundreds of millions of years. Another interesting discovery is that of ultra-diffuse galaxies. When galaxies come together, they are referred to as the Virgo Cluster. Thousands of galaxies form together in what is termed Virgo Cluster. Approximately 1,300 galaxies are found in this space. In these clusters, they are grouped into low-luminosity galaxy and high-luminosity galaxy. Under the low-luminosity galaxy is another galaxy referred to as ultra-diffuse galaxy. This galaxy with an extremely low luminosity was first discovered by two astronomers in the year of 1984. The astronomers said there is a gas involved in the formation of stars, and this gas was lacked in ultra-diffuse galaxies. Ultra-diffuse galaxies vary when it comes to the presence of dark matter. Some of the galaxies have dark matter in abundance, or some have no dark matter at all. Apart from the Virgo Cluster, there is the Leo Cluster and the Coma Cluster. The ultra-diffuse galaxy could be formed when galaxies collide together, and this collision would then affect the youngest of the galaxies as the gas contents would be lost. This loss of gas would then lead to galaxies with low brightness on the surface, and this is believed by some astronomers as the origin of ultra-diffuse galaxies. Coma Clusters has around 1,000 galaxies in it, and the ultra-diffuse galaxy is one of them. This cluster made researchers realize that the lack of gas from the ultra-diffuse galaxy is due to another cluster environment. The galaxy is stripped of their gas. There is a particular galaxy cluster that stands out from the rest. Due to its large group in this galaxy is the Milky Way. This cluster is formed by galaxies of different sizes, densities, colors, and brightness. In this group, the ultra-diffuse galaxy is very faint. This made astronomers come together from different parts of the world to determine what happens when ultra-diffuse galaxies find themselves in less cluster environments like the Milky Way. The research by the astronomers showed that ultra-diffuse galaxies are a noticeable at the center of the galaxy. 
This is when they found themselves in the midst of a cluster environment. Another finding is that their absence from the center of the cluster makes them younger and reduces or removes the interstellar gas. This will prevent ultra diffuse galaxies from producing new stars at the center of the cluster. So what do you make of these interesting discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.